The Chameleon Empass 2.0 is a versatile, high-performing, man-packable HF antenna that was designed and built upon a Lego block style system, meaning it is versatile and has a series of interchangeable components. This starts with the ground spike, and then you choose either a Cha Hybrid Micro or Mini to go on top of it, followed by a military extension, a military whip. The combination of these gets you over 18 feet in the air. Attach your coax and a ground radial, and you're ready to operate. This antenna is one of the most widely recognized portable systems in the world. Ask any amateur operator about the MPAS 2.0, they will almost immediately refer you to that greater than 18 foot tall vertical that gets up in the air in a matter of minutes. Well, it's way more than that. It's a series of wire antenna configuration setups as well. I have the 73 foot sloper set up as my station reference antenna for greater than two years. We'll book in this video with two vertical installations and in between, we'll talk about all the wire installation configurations that you can achieve with this kit. Rounding out the kit is currently the sling bag, which houses this particular antenna system and a lot of other gear you can pack into it. Hey everyone, I'm Bob, KD4BMG HOA Ham. This series on my perspective of the modular portable antenna system is sponsored by Chameleon Antenna. I view this as way more than the 2.0. I see it including the light, the tactical delta loop, and all the various mounts that will work with these systems. The number of configurations is near endless, and if you stick with me through the series, I guarantee you I'll surprise you a time or two along the way. My first major investment as an amateur operator was in the MPAS 2.0. As I was learning how to operate, as I was learning what POTA meant, living in a homeowners association, needing to operate backyard portable, have something that would set up and break down quickly and be durable for that constant up and down and be functional, that led me right to the MPAS 2.0. What you're getting from me today is my perspective after using this for more than four and a half years. This is the one and only worm's eye view you'll get of this portable vertical installation. Throughout the rest of the series, we'll be getting bird's eye views, so you can look from the top down and see how these installations occur. This setup is broadband, short to medium range, and it provides omnidirectional ground wave communication between 1.8 and 54 megahertz. And in my experience, sky wave propagation 40 meters and up. This setup requires the military whip, military extension, hybrid matching transformer, ground spike, coax, and ground radial. Ask any licensed amateur what their favorite type of antenna is, a wire or some type of vertical like an MPAS 2.0 or a telescoping antenna. They're going to give you a bipolar answer because they're bipolar options. Everyone has a preference. The bottom line is every antenna has its application. And one of the greatest uses of an antenna like this is its ease and speed of setup. I purposely put the timer on and started it right when I disengage the velcro on that military extension i want you to see how quickly this goes from the components in hand to an 18 foot antenna in the air and whether you love and prefer wire antennas to this type of vertical there's no arguing the versatility and speed of setup whether it's a poda operation backyard in the hoa if you're operating emergency communications and you want to get on the air quickly and this antenna gives you your propagation it's the way to go for quick installation. I'm fortunate you see me pushing this into the ground by hand. Where I live in the Tampa Bay area, in my backyard, I have very soft soil. So I set this antenna system up completely, screw all the components together, and then push it into the ground, add my coax, add my ground radial. If you don't have ground that is this soft, then your option would be to take a mallet and put the ground spike into the ground first, then take the other three components which you've assembled together, the whip, the extension, the micro or mini, screw all three of them together, lift them up in the air, and screw them on to the ground spike. And I don't know if you've noticed, I'm not rushing here. I'm taking my time and also, on my micro, I forgot to take off the shackle and the nut that was on the bottom stud. That's how quick this gets up in the air. 
I enjoy continuing to hone and develop my skill set so that I can impact my ability to operate in varying conditions. Understanding SWR and using Whisper Maps are just some of the tools that I'm beginning to use. Here I'm getting a plot across all of the ham bands using the Chameleon SA1. This is the analyzer that I use remotely when I want to tune up one of my coil antennas in the field. And when I'm in the shack and want to get a reading on anything that's backyard portable, it lets me look across all of the bands that I'm attempting to operate on. Here we can see on 40, we probably want to hit that tune button. As soon as we get to 20 meters, it's like, well, we don't need to tune. This antenna is already at an acceptable SWR. 17 meters, we're good here as well. 15 meters, still in a good range. You could tune up if you want just to make it perfect, but you don't need to, you can operate. I'd hit the tune button here on 12 meters. When we get to 10 meters, that's a pretty wide band. I'd hit the tune button here. Six meters, the magic band. Well, I'd hit the tune button here. And believe it or not, we can check two meters. Let's do it just for the fun of it. Who knew you can get on this antenna on two meters? Don't know that I'm going to, but I could. Thanks to channel Patreons, I've been able to add this dedicated Zactech Whisper desktop transmitter to the toolkit. Weak signal propagation report. How about 200 milliwatts, 0.2 watts? How's that for weak signal? And I've had this set up for about a 16 hour period of time on 40 through 10. Here's the first map of all of those bands together. It looks pretty impressive, doesn't it? Next up, here's our specific look at 40 meters, which is in line with what I would have expected. 30 meters, I don't ever use 30 meters, but for those of you who do, this is pretty impressive. 20 meters, I'm not hating that. Wow, really like how this performed on 20 meters. 17 meters, again, very strong performance. 15, 12, 10. These whisper maps concur with my own personal experience with this vertical antenna for the last four and a half years, and they provide further evidence as to why people like this antenna so much. Very quick to deploy and quite effective in communication. We can't possibly go into the same level of depth on all the options for wire configurations as we did on the vertical or we'll be here forever. This is where you as an amateur operator get to experiment with what works best for you. Every one of these configurations that we're going to talk about start with either the micro or mini and then the 73 foot wire that comes along with your MPAS 2.0 system. For your wire configurations, you're going to install your micro or mini in one of two ways. The first way would be attaching it to the ground with your spike. So you would remove this nut on the bottom of the 3 by 24 stud, attach your ground spike and put this into the ground because the ground spike is holding your antenna in place and you're attaching the wire to the top and you're putting some tension on this wire. So the ground spike holds this into the ground. You would attach your radial then to the ground spike. Let's say that you're putting this up into the air. Uh, say in an Envis configuration. Anytime you're putting this particular item in the air, then your ground wire is going on this bottom stud. Again, that's what that nut is for. And there's a ring on this ground radial that you can attach here. So your ground radial will float from the bottom of this stud. And you're using some type of cord, some type of shock cord on this shackle to hoist this up in the air. And then what you're doing is you're attaching your wire to the top of your micro or mini by disengaging this threaded stud on the top. One end of your antenna wire has a ring terminal and you're putting that in the threaded stud and you're screwing that back on top of the micro or mini. And you want to get that tight because of course you want a very good connection for your radiator. Now, that shackle serves a secondary purpose. You're not only using that to attach a shock cord or rope to pull it up in the air, it also is your strain relief for your antenna wire. So now you've got strain relief on the wire and you're not tugging on this terminal. That's what this is for, that's how this works. One more piece of simple but important gear would be this other ring on the wire. It can slide all across the length of the wire. This you would use if you were doing an inverted V where your Cha Hybrid Micro or Mini is set up in the ground at one point on the installation, the far end of your 73 foot wire is on the other and you're elevating the center of the wire using this ring terminal. You'll see me do this. 
Here I am with that polymer ring in my hand and I'm getting ready to attach it to a piece of shock cord that's on this cross member I've attached to my portamast. I have the 20 foot portamast. It's 20 feet when it's installed into a ground sleeve, a foot and a half in the ground. So because I'm setting on top of the ground surface here, I'm guessing I'm probably close to 15 feet in the air once I get my portamast fully extended. This end fed inverted V will be optimal around 25 feet in the air. You know me, I'm a pragmatist. So I'm going to achieve the best possible configuration I can, and then I'm going to operate and do some testing. And that's how you should look at amateur radio communication. One thing to note throughout all of these videos, I use a 360 camera, and depending on where an object is on the two side extremes of a camera, it gets distorted. So just understand things will seem to bend and twist in ways that's not humanly possible. I use this to achieve the broadest field of view that I possibly can, and so I can do some really unique things in post-edit. Don't let what you see on the screen fool you. See that post that just showed up on the left side? <laughs> Trust me, it's straight as can be. I'm moving to the left extreme. I've grabbed the other end of that 73 foot wire. Remember one is attached to the right side to my Cha hybrid micro. The center is on the polymer ring that's at the top of my portamast that I promise you is true and straight. And now I'm going to the far opposite extreme and putting a ground stake in the ground. And this gives you the view uh, or the footprint of what it looks like to install this inverted V. With this type of setup, you can achieve ground wave communication and broadband medium to long range bi-directional sky wave broadside to the antenna. My ground spike is right below this tree branch holding my micro and the wires attached. I need to get that sliding polymer ring on the rest of the wire, pull the wire up into the tree to create an inverted L configuration. It's a broadband short to medium range antenna that tends to be unidirectional towards the end of the horizontal part of the antenna. So you could deploy this if you were trying to create some directionality. While 25 foot height will achieve the optimal performance the pragmatist in me would try any height configuration that is dictated by the situation or the circumstances, the environment that I find myself in. I've redeployed the rope from the inverted L, attached it to the shackle of my micro, and pulled the micro up into the tree about 12 feet. This is so I can achieve the horizontal Envis configuration, which is designed to provide good regional closer in rather than DX propagation on lower frequencies. There's my little polymer ring right in the middle of that 73 foot wire. I've had this type of antenna on the ridge vent of the roof of my home, and it also provided omnidirectional medium range sky wave propagation on frequencies above 10 megahertz. I've saved the best for last, the sloping wire configuration. Here I'm attaching the end of my wire with a polymer ring onto my portamast. Let's go ahead and get this 15 feet up into the air. 25 to 40 feet is the optimal height for setting up this antenna. And then it's going to slope down to your Cha Hybrid Micro or Mini. We're going to put it into the ground with our stake. Of course, there are other ways to mount these. I've mounted one on the outside of my home using a utility box. And then it just is disguised in the homeowners association. No one knows what's there. That wire is pulling on my left hand until I finally get it attached with the strain relief. And here we have a look from the ground up towards the portamast. This is a high performing broadband short to medium range HF antenna offering both ground wave and sky wave propagation. It's mostly omnidirectional and slightly unidirectional towards the end of the antenna wire. And why is this my favorite you ask? Well, mostly because I was able to get this up in my very small lot at the HOA, and here's what I've been able to achieve. I told you we would bookend the video with two verticals. We started out with the two pieces screwed together, the military extension and the military whip. You might know it as a man pack collapsible. It's 
almost nine and a half feet long. Chameleon shows it in their instructions as a man pack antenna, meaning it fits into a backpack along with your radio. And by the way, those instructions are very helpful for you to understand exactly how to set up. It's filled with a lot more information than what I've been able to provide in this video. So if you choose to purchase this or you already have it, that is filled with a lot of useful information. I don't own a backpack that really fits this particular scenario or a radio, but I do live in a homeowners association and I'm always attempting to operate stealth here in the HOA. So I went into the backyard and I started to go ahead and look at this man pack plus the military extension. I took it apart after about, I think it was 12 to 16 hours of operation on Whisper. Of course, I turned off my Whisper transmitter. I don't know what 0 0.2 watts feels like, but I didn't want to find out. I took it out of the ground and disconnected the man pack collapsible, the military whip from the military extension. And then I took that military whip and just put that alone on top of my Cha Hybrid Micro. I walk around the backside of that little small patch of trees there. I stick my man pack collapsible antenna on top of the micro, on top of the ground spike, into the ground it goes, stuck in that little cluster of trees, and it just disappears. You can't even see it. And understand that military whip, it's green. It just blends in. So here I am for the next 16 hours operating stealth in the HOA. Nobody knows what I'm up to. Let's go get a look at this on the SWR meter. With the antenna connected to my SA1 Chameleon Analyzer, and the app open on my computer, let's go ahead and do a sweep of all the ham bands. And we'll see what we need to tune up on with this short whip, nine and a half foot whip. So here with a specific look at 40, obviously we're going to want to tune on 40. On 20, we could operate here, but I would hit my tune button to touch this up. 17 meters, again, we can operate. If you wanna to touch it up, go ahead and hit the tune button. 15 meters, no need to tune, but you can if you want. 12, we're in great shape. 10, we're also fine to operate as is. So now let's go ahead and move away from our SWR plot. Let's go back to that Whisper device and let's run this for 12 to 16 hours and see what we look like on Whisper. Here we have a look at 40 meters. I don't think I'm overly disappointed on that given the size of this whip. 30 meters, well, that's looking pretty healthy. Here on 20 meters, I'm absolutely happy with the performance of this antenna at 0.2 watts. Okay, that was a surprise on 17. Very happy with that. Happy with 15, also a surprise to me. 12 meters, not too bad. The only surprise for me was really 10 meters. I expected something a little better, but we all know that propagation changes. 10 wasn't doing so great. We also know you should be running Whisper for longer periods of time so you get the appropriate sample size to make sure you get an accurate and good reading. Here's the view of all bands, and I'm gonna say I'm pretty happy with this for a tiny antenna that just disappears in the HOA. So Bob, what do you think of the Ampass 2.0? <laughs> really? You need to ask? Well, six months after I purchased my first system, I purchased my second system. The second system was tested out. It was put into a go bag, never to be touched. All the gear was put there so that no matter when I needed to bug out and go in an emergency, I didn't have to wonder whether or not I had put all the gear back in after I went on a POTA operation. Self-contained, ready to go. The first one I purchased was left on a grab and go shelf. Every time I wanted to operate backyard portable here in the HOA, grab it, set up, bring it back after I took it down, get ready for the next operation, the next application. So what do I think of it? Good gear, glad I have it. I've got two of them. I can highly recommend this system. I hope you found this useful. I hope you're ready for the next one. Talk to you soon, friend, 73.